I should be just shouting out my guy Mike at the beginning of every single upload here because I keep picking back piggybacking off things he's talking about on Brace for Impact. But I kind of felt the need to talk about this one a little bit. And you know, in regard to the Motor City machine guns leaving TNA, there's a there's a word that he keeps using, and it is identity. These two guys, they're they're a big part of the identity of TNA. The, uh, they're woven within the fabric of TNA and the tag team division, the X division, and now, you know, to an extent, the world uh, title scene. But um, when 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 I did uploads regarding the guns, when Mike did them, whenever, you know, I, I see a few over, you know, across YouTube here. The TNA fans get in the comments and immediately start saying these guys are replaceable. Now, I understand there's always a little bit of anger because um, I think when there's a wrestling company that you predominantly watch, and even if there's like a sports team you watch, football, baseball, basketball, whatever, when someone leaves on their own volition, the fans a lot of times start turning against them. And you saw when Eli Drake bounced, you know, the TNA fans, he's replaceable, which he, he wasn't, by the way. EC3, replaceable. Bobby Lashley, replaceable. Okay, Eric Young, Bobby Roode, list goes on and on because people get upset. They don't like when someone uh, when someone wants to leave for greener pastures or whatever it is. So this is no different. Every video podcast would ever talk about the Motor City machine guns. They are not that big of a loss. They're stale. They're bland. They're boring. Now, I don't I don't disagree with that point that they were bland for me. They were a little stale for me. It's not to to discount what they did in the ring, and um, I didn't think they were like bad promos by any stretch. But you know, they I I just kind of felt like I seen it all with them. So you know, to me, it is a loss. It is a big loss because when guys like this leave, who are tied to the the history of TNA, you are losing more and more within your identity. Now here's the deal. TNA, their social media, they love to remind you who used to be there, who used to wrestle there, right? They're going to do the same thing when the Motor City Machine Guns debut on AEW. What, what are they going to do? Guess guess who was um, guess who our, our last world champion was and our last exhibition champion? Guess who used to wrestle here, right? The problem is because their social media strategy and their and their really overall strategy with the company is so focused on the fucking library that when you are removing uh, wrestlers who are so deeply tied into that library, you are losing identity within a company. They're not building for the stars of tomorrow the way that they should be. And especially now when you're just bringing in guys in per date and you're bringing in freelance wrestlers and people who want to be here for six months, you can't build identity with that. You're just, I, I've said this many times, you are just, you have become a booking. You are uh, you are an independent wrestling company on TV. That's what's going to happen with every time that one of these guys who is ingrained in the fabric of your company, one of these guys, one of these girls leaves. So are they replaceable? They're kind of not. From a talent standpoint, maybe. You can't find a Motor City Machine Guns on the Indies right now, but you can find the next Motor City Machine Guns. But are you going to put the effort into building that? Because we have not seen a whole lot of uh, homegrown talent over the years come out of TNA. You can argue that Jordan Grace is. Um, and and there, are some, there are some names. Don't get me wrong. But... This isn't a t- this isn't a company of all the wrestling companies that comes off like we're trying to build the stars of tomorrow. They've always been very content getting people that came from here, that came from there, that they can just slot into the title picture for a short amount of time or whatever. But every time you get rid of a Chris Saban, you get rid of an Alex Shelley, and you replace them with someone we've never heard before or someone who's never been on TV before, you are becoming less TNA and more of it of a random indie company and we're going to get to the point 
because these guys aren't replaceable. We're, Moose is going to leave. Jordan Grace is going to leave. You know, like, I, I mean, I see a guy like Eddie Edwards probably wrestling there forever. But some of these people at the top, they're going to leave. And uh, it, we're going to get to the point that it's just like, hey, it's it's Eddie Edwards. <laughs> Eddie Edwards has a pro wrestling T-shirt. Eddie and the Edwards, like a band. It's going to become Eddie and the Edwards one day. We're going to have this one dude who's been a part of TNA forever and then just a bunch of fucking wrestlers who might be here for a, a week. They might be here for two weeks. They might be here for six months, maybe a year, probably not longer than that. So, no, you can't replace guys like this when they rebranded to TNA and I did, we're still early in the rebrand. So I, I'm not going to jump to conclusions, but I'm expecting, okay, we're going to start getting the things that made TNA TNA. They can never get the old TNA back. Someone reminded me of that the other day uh, on, on Twitter, that there's too many people who just want the old TNA back. And that, that's what they think the rebrand was supposed to be. And they're not going to get that back. But there were things that was part of that identity that they stripped away when they became Impact Wrestling. The knockouts, knockdown, lockdown, Destination X or whatever the X Division one was called. I never know the name of it. Um, Trying to think of some of these other matches or pay-per-views. But yeah, they'll do Ultimate X. You know, and Ultimate X is always fun. But there's, you know, there's a lot in the history of TNA that they got away from that was, again, part of the identity. And we're still, you know, we've been talking about this. We're still just, it's just impact wrestling with logos and and change ropes. That's what we were worried it was going to be. And when they started off the year, I didn't think that's where they were going with it. Like, I felt a very different vibe. But I was also first to admit that I may have hard to kill drunk goggles on. That I may have snake eyes drunk goggles on and i said i warned a lot of you guys too we may have drunk goggles on but once the first couple tapings the sets of tapings are in the books we're going to know what this company is going forward we're going to know what the vision is and the vision is for it to be impact with minimal changes there's talent changes there's roster changes and they're positive ones but i really think they need to get back to some of the things that that made people fall in love with TNA and not just the name. But to go back to what I'm saying about the Chris Sabins of the world, you lose those guys and they're people who are dedicated to the company. It, it's just a matter of time until the company feels like a bunch of fucking randos. It might not be this year. It might not be next year, but give it, give it three years. And I think we're going to, the, there is a possibility, there's a strong possibility that the company is going to take huge steps in the wrong direction. We hope that it, we hope that that's not the case. We hope that they're bringing in new names and they build something and they, they build the wrestlers of tomorrow and something we can continue to invest in. We hope that's what it is. But every single time one of these loyal people leave, and, and again, people are also saying, oh, well, how do you know it's tied to Scott Demore? It's fucking tied to Scott Demore. Okay. Like, let's not make excuses. And you're going to see that more and more when more free agencies, uh, more free agents, I'm sorry, come up. But I think this is a bigger deal because it's it's just this, the one of the first dominoes to fall. And it's, it's, it's the beginning of the snowball, folks. It is. It doesn't mean hope is lost. They just have to figure out how to manage it. 